Going to a church will lead to bondage. The churchian is dependent upon a closed religious system called church. They attend on a weekly basis, sit on pews, and accept whatever their pastor or the religious official feeds to them. The tithe is incorporated into the programming to finance their man-made kingdoms, which has a name on the sign on the outside of their building. They will tell their minions that there is no covering or protection outside their umbrella of their four walls. Anyone who attempts to leave will do so out of fear as the noose will tighten on anyone who is in defiance to her ways. Once someone has sold their soul to cookie-cutter religion called church, they become enslaved in the bondage of human works full of human traditions. The goal is to convert others to conform to organized religion. Once a new member is created, they become a servant to the institution, obligated to commit their time and finances to the cause, bowing down to the leaders of the constituencies, the kings within the four walls. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 3, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. The church minion will be told how to worship and by giving sacrifices to their God, which is a corporate denominational entity. If anyone attempts to defy their ideology, they are deemed cursed or an outcast. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. The churchian is coerced to tithe to receive blessing, but neglects their own household for the man-made temple of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23, Ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. John chapter 8, verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Jesus Christ already has paid the price. It is a travesty that so many put themselves into spiritual and financial bondage within the churches of men. A true follower of Jesus Christ must abandon the traditions of man and cast aside all the loudmouth pulpit peacocks who are practicing, teaching, and preaching a false gospel perpetuating counterfeit Christianity. All those who support and conform to the ideology of organized religion are not a part of the kingdom of God. It is unfortunate that the churchian is brainwashed to believe that they are doing the work of God by making weekly offerings and sacrifices into the coffers of man-made temples so their salaried mediators can make a living off the backs of the people. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The salaried church officials have their minions believe that they are their covering, but this is another word for bondage to keep the sheeple deceived and obedient to their leadership. They will say, if you do not tithe, you will not receive blessing from God, and twist scripture verses to promote their self-centered agendas. These false ministers will say that they had a dream, vision, or they heard from God as fodder for the sheeple. They make stuff up from their vain imaginations to control the masses as they run to the trough, lapping up their every word. They have no understanding that careful study of God's inspired word has revealed all the instruction there is to know for God's people to follow. The kingdoms of men called church are attempting to imitate the fulfilled, abolished temple system of the Old Testament. What they call the house of God is a building or tabernacle that they have named for themselves. They call the stage with the pulpit upon it the altar. They focus on the tithe, which was part of the old Levitical system that pertained to the ceremonial law. They deem anyone who does not adhere to the practices of their temple system as divisive. They could be put on the chopping block to be cast out from their blessing of being under their covering, a concept that is foreign to scripture. All these instituted practices are the way of Cain, and God deems their worship as an abomination to him. 
The self-appointed church hirelings will preach being under grace, but in practice they put their minions under the law that includes perpetuating the traditions of men, falsely believing that they are satisfying God within a vacuum of hype, entertainment, and paranormal experiences in their vain attempts to become the elite of churchianity as fans and fanatics within fantasy land Christianity. Within this portrait of imitation Christianity, there are no disciples of Jesus Christ to be found. Although they attempt to associate with Jesus, they follow after ecclesiastical men instead. They make the word of God of no effect. Their false form of unity is an ecumenical agenda of uniting all forms of Christianity in biblical error inherited from the system of Constantine. Whenever a man wants to be in charge, it is not of the Holy Spirit, because it does not let Jesus Christ be the head. A true follower of Jesus Christ has the freedom to think and study the Word of God for themselves without salaried officials getting in the way. To continue the carnal self-centeredness of man's traditions is death and bondage that negates the love of the Father, life in Jesus Christ, and the liberty of the Holy Spirit. The church system creates converts but the gospel creates disciples. The only way someone can be brainwashed with religious garbage is to enter through the doors of a denominational church. Once they are inside, this is where the indoctrination takes place using coercion, peer pressure, physiological tactics that create altered spiritual states by setting different moods, hype, lighting, sounds, etc. to create the desired hypnotic effect leading the gullible to an altar call to recite a canned prayer to sell your soul to the institutionalized church, Jesus. Once the pew-warming church minions are created, they will be filled with false teaching that if they do not attend and tithe at certain predetermined times, God's judgment will come or Satan will be allowed to attack them because of their disobedience which could lead to the removal of the hirelings covering over them unless they conform to the institutional mold. You see, churches don't make disciples of Jesus Christ. They create a Romanized, pagan, organizational, man-made minions that violate the purpose God has intended for his people through Jesus Christ. The church system is easy to discern once the believer studies the word of God, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them to truth. Organized religion is a clever deception that depends upon their sacred cow scripture verses that they twist to prove their man-made doctrines. The famous churchian statements are, The Holy Spirit has revealed to me, Jesus spoke to me and said this, or God told me to tell you. Those who know the Word of God already know God's message and instructions for His people. Subjective opinions and personal experiences must be evaluated through God's Word. Many fail to understand that everything with the Constantine church system is simply the practice of channeling religious spirits and using the carnal imaginations of men who mix the holy and profane to hop up the masses. Spiritual truths are pawned from the imaginations of men that are far removed from the truth of the Bible. The epitome of the counterfeit church system is the sole reliance on false doctrine, teachings, prophets, and ministers, but God has sent them a strong delusion. The bogus religious baloney that they spew from the pulpit is crafty sophistry, and many fall for their seductions. It is the personal responsibility of every follower of Jesus Christ to love the truth that is written in God's word and allow the Holy Spirit to teach them the things of the way of Jesus Christ and the apostles. There is no other way to maturing in Jesus Christ. Any other way by default is a wide opening to accepting and receiving a strong delusion. The manifestation of the strong delusion are people who desire to make a name for themselves and the results are named church buildings, which are the religious kingdoms of men that serve and appeal to the flesh. They validate all of their activities based on their subjective opinions and desire accolades of approval, acceptance, and appreciation from men. They do these things all at the expense of truth with no understanding of God's eternal purpose, which can only be done through Jesus Christ. The striking dissimilarity between the institutional church system and the genuine church can be found right on the pages of Scripture. 
It jumps out, but most don't read it or are blind to seeing it as they prefer religious books that their pastor promotes instead. The church who are built by Jesus Christ follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, not men. The church system is cursed and is a place of bondage and spiritual death. Mark chapter 11 verses 13 and 14. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter for ever. And his disciples heard it. Mark chapter 11 verse 21. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedst is withered away. Matthew chapter 21 verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers in the seats of them that sold doves. Jesus Christ destroyed the temple system with all the priesthood and everything else that came with it. Pious religious men still want to erect temples and create a man-made system to attain or contain God. Jesus Christ did not come to reform the temple system, but he has abolished it. All churches of men are cursed. They are a corrupt, commercial corpses that are a blight upon the land. There will be no revival in the church-state system. It will never happen within a group that makes the gospel a product of commerce owned by the state, 501c3 status, practicing a Constantine system of worship. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. This will be a hard pill to swallow for the churchgoer. But we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. We are to worship God not the way we want to, but the way he wants us to. Any other way is a Cain offering which rejects God. Matthew, Matthew chapter, chapter 7 verses 22 and 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Thank you for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. This is the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, took, him, took on himself the nature of a man. He was crucified and died for our sins, and he rose again on the third day. I want to ask you the most important question of your life. Your joy or sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer to this question. Are you saved? This has nothing to do with how good you are or if you go to a building called a church. But are you born again? In John chapter 3 verse 7, Jesus said, You must be born again. How can you be born again? First of all, you must realize that you are a sinner. Sin is anything in us that does not express or is contrary to the holy nature of our Creator, God. For instance, have you ever lied or cheated or stolen? 
these are all contrary to the character of God. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages or the payment of sin is death. We read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. But God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus had to shed his blood and die. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said, My sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus, and He died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. In Acts chapter 17, verse 30, to repent means to turn around, to confess and forsake one's sins. It's a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of attitude that abhors sins. It agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees that Jesus died for us on the cross. In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. If you would like to learn more about sin, salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, or anything else concerning the Christian faith, please visit www.acceptyoubeconverted.com. Acceptyoubeconverted.com is an anti-church system, Trinitarian, free will, eternal security, King James only, Christian Zionist, Young Earth Creation, Lordship Salvation Ministry, where you can learn sound doctrine, apologetics, hermeneutics, and more. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is mobile friendly and secure from hackers and malware with SiteLock. Are you looking for fellowship? AcceptYouBeConverted.com is a virtual community with daily visits from men and women around the globe. Each page includes a comment section. There is a live chat feature that is available in the desktop and mobile version where you can chat with anyone on the site at any time. Join the fun on the message board, which you can access by clicking on the link on the footer or by going to acceptyoubeconverted.proboards.com. AcceptYouBeConverted.com offers MP3 Bible teaching through Sermon Audio, which you can access through the website or through SermonAudio.com or the Sermon Audio app. Just search for It Is Written KJV. If you would like to send me your prayer requests, questions, or comments, there is a contact form on the website, also my Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to contact me anytime. I would love to hear from you. Please visit today. Support the ministry. Share with your friends and family. Share on gospel tracks. Pray for the ministry. Become a partner and help spread the truth of God's Word far and wide. Introducing new video series for YouTube channel It Is Written KJV 1611. Bible Hermeneutics. Learn how to correctly interpret the Bible. Defending the Faith. Master apologetics and be prepared to answer any objections. 
KJV Bible Q&A, answering various questions with the Bible. Doctrines of Devils Refuted, refuting many false doctrines with Scripture. False Church System Exposed, exposing the many problems within the modern church system. Go Preach, all about spreading the Gospel. False Teachers Exposed, Bible teachers held accountable and named by name. KJV Defended, exposing corrupt modern Bible versions and teaching all things concerning the King James Bible. And more. Please subscribe and share.